Thank you. Thanks for the very warm welcome here to All Things Open. My name is Martin Mikos. I'm the CEO of HackerOne, and I'm here to talk about software and security. Because today, we used to be able to develop software without ever thinking of security, information security or cybersecurity. But today, there's no software you can develop without having to think about how to make it trustworthy, how to make the software secure. So that's what I'm talking about today. And let me share my screen here. I have to find my slides. There we go. Share and present. So as I said, there's no coding anymore that doesn't involve an aspect of security. Whatever we are building for ourselves or for somebody else for public use or not, we must make sure it's as secure as possible to reduce the risk of cyber breaches, disruptions, uh, any kind of cyber crime that may happen. And I'm Martin Mikos, I'm CEO of HackerOne. I was previously CEO of MySQL, and we learned back then about open source that in open source, some people spend an awful lot of time in order to save money, and they are users. And some spend a lot of money in order to save time, and they become customers. So there was this division into two different types of, of users in open source. In security, it's a little bit different. Everybody have to, has to spend money. Everybody has to spend time. Cybersecurity or information security or just security will not work if we, not everybody is participating. It's everybody's duty. Everybody's spending a little bit of money and some time to make sure that we reach the cyber hygiene that will keep our systems safe and trustworthy. Because when our systems are not trustworthy, we get all kinds of societal side effects and bad problems in, in society that seem to not relate to software, but they do relate to software when people can't trust the software they are using. So what is then security? Some people have been thinking that security is about making sure nothing bad ever happens. But there is no absolute level of security. There's no place where cyber risk is zero. It is in the practice of information security is probabilistic risk management. You think about the probability of something bad happen, happening and you're trying to reduce the likelihood of it. So you're looking for the most economical way of reducing the odds of a cyber breach. Like how can you make the cost for a criminal go up as high as possible? How can you make the likelihood that your own employees will make a mistake as low as possible? And every day you work on those likelihoods, those, those percentages, and try to drive them down. They will never reach zero, but if you think they can go to zero, you are already wrong. It's just an, an uh, uh, everlasting practice of reducing the risk step by step by step. And it starts from when you develop software. See, when you design software, you have to design security in from the start. And we used to never do that. At MySQL, we developed the fastest, most lovable database of the world. We didn't think much about security. We thought about, thought about performance, robustness, ease of use, and things like that. But today, everything needs to be secure. So where we have CISOs leading the security work in a company, what does the C really stand for? And of course, we know it stands for chief. But there are two schools that we are seeing. There's the commanding uh, information security officer and the collaborative one. And it's clear that in the past, we had a practice all over the world of thinking that security was something where you had one person in charge of a small group who had unlimited authority to block anything, stop anything, uh, command anything, and the others didn't worry. But you cannot outsource security. It has to be everybody's responsibility. So let's look more closely at it. In the, in the old school, the main principle of cybersecurity was that it's closed, it's confidential, it's exclusive. It's just a small group of certified professionals who will even know what cybersecurity is. But in the new world, we're saying, no, it's open. It has to be open. It has to be inclusive so that everybody can participate. And we have to be transparent about both the problems and the solutions. We have to be transparent with what went wrong and how we fixed it and what we are learning. And when you look at this as an open source developer, you will say, hey, but that's exactly how we do it in, the op in open source software. And that is so true. So what HackerOne is doing in security is what open source did to software development, bringing in a model where you're open, you're transparent, 
you're inclusive, you're collaborative, and you work together with people. You work together with people you disagree with, but you work together with them. And the goal in this new model is the reduction of cyber risk. But in the traditional model, the goal was impenetrability. People thought that you can build an absolute defense on your perimeter. And they were trying to reach compliance against certain standards and laws that you have to be compliant with. Sure, you have to be compliant. And sure, if you can protect your perimeter, nothing bad in that. But that is not the, the real goal. The real goal is to reduce the risk of any uh, incident or breach or disruption happening anywhere in your digital asset. So in the old world, it was only certified experts who were allowed and invited to do security. Today, it's everybody. It's those who design software, those who develop software, those who test software, those who use software. It's everybody. It's the leadership of a, a group. It's, it's the ones who are individual contributors, may not even work with software, but they're all using it. And we're all adding to the risk because we have something that can cause a breach to happen. We have credentials, we have access to things. So we have to build this security thinking into the practice of everybody. And that's a change from, the from previous times when we didn't have to worry about security. It wasn't an issue, but it is an issue now. And when we do it, we will switch security from being a cynical guard of rules and, and, and sort of a, a, a team that says no to a business enabler that allows you to build better software that consumers will trust that they are more eager to use. So instead of saying danger, stay away from this thing, we say, tell us what you see, let's learn together. And instead of looking for blame when things go wrong, you do a retro and you learn from it. And you're not blaming individual people for what went wrong. This is a practice we've learned from airline safety, where they will do retros and even tiny, tiny deviations in how an airplane is operating or landing anything, all the details. And they never look, do it in order to blame people. They do it in order to learn. And they share the information between all airlines, even though they're competitors. We have to learn to do the same with software. And when we do that, the cost won't be unchecked and go through the roof. It will be correlated with the results that we are achieving. So we must democratize security, make it an issue for everybody. In essence, we need to learn from open source. We need to do to security what open source did to software 20 years ago, 15 years ago, and still is doing. We need to legislate cyber hygiene and make sure that it's a requirement on companies that are serving our citizens. We need to fix our software or throw it away. We can't keep going with software that isn't secure. And finally, in education, we shouldn't call it computer science or software engineering if there is no cybersecurity courses involved in it. And imagine today you can take a CS degree without learning anything about security. That's so wrong. It's so stupid. It's so bad. And this is why most of the security experts we have in the world today, ethical hackers, security researchers, all of these, they are self-taught because schools don't really teach security today. So in the future, when we do achieve digital trust, it will be because we are, uh, we are not ignoring hackers anymore. We realize that hackers are good people are trying to help us. And if they are bad people are trying to break in, they're not hackers. They're criminals. So ignoring hackers will be viewed as negligence in the future. Security will be collaborative. We'll work together, share our learnings, pool our defenses, because that's the only way to work against an asymmetric threat. And we have to be transparent and open because it's the only way to build trust in any group. It is the only way to reach a level of trust is to be open about your shortcomings, your longcomings, whatever strengths, weaknesses you have. Openness uh, leads the way, just as open source has been doing. So uh, in summary, there's just one way to do security, and it is together by sharing what we are learning, by reviewing each other's code before it is in deployment, after it is deployment, by doing retros of everything that goes on so we can learn and go back earlier in the software development lifecycle to fix the problems we had there and try to eradicate the vulnerabilities and the bugs that we are creating. We will still have uh, weaknesses in our systems. It is not possible for human beings to build something that's completely uh, safe and secure for, for cyber risk. 
it's completely impossible. If something has no weaknesses and no vulnerabilities, then it wasn't created by human beings. So when it's human created, it will have weaknesses. The good news is other human beings will see it. They can come in and help. And there are today around a million ethical hackers in the world have signed up at HackerOne, will come in and review uh, attack surfaces, try to break into websites, mobile applications, APIs, whatever the uh, blockchain infrastructure, whatever it is to test it and be the immune system of the internet where they try to break in and in that way allow you to fix it. Because the best way to avoid uh, getting hacked is to try to get hacked. Because once somebody tries to hack into you and you, they tell you what they find, you can fix it. So by doing that together, we can create the same positive effect within cybersecurity that open source software created in the world of software. And today, you're stupid if you're not using open source software. And soon, you will be seen as negligent if you're not listening to hackers. So thank you for listening today. Hope it was informative. I'll stay uh, around for the Q&A. Uh, you have my contact details on this slide. Feel free to reach out, tag me on Twitter, uh, and give me your feedback on what you are learning, how you are solving these problems. I would love to hear from you. Thank you.